Hey guys, this is New Sensei. In previous reviews of training tools like stretching bands, I've hinted that form should reflect function. But a cool looking training tool should be more fun to use. This is the Bow Trainer. This training tool is literally called the Bow Trainer, trademarked and patented. Created by Prairie Innovators, the Bow Trainer is basically a 36 inch stick or 91 centimeters with a rubber grip in the middle, allowing for ambidextrous use. The main design feature of the Bow Trainer are the multiple latex bands. These bands can be used individually or combined together to pull different weights up to 130 pounds. The Bow Trainer comes with a small but very informative user manual. Inside, you will find instructions on how to determine your draw length in case you don't already know. There is also a chart that shows the average draw length for different heights. The manual also contains a table that states the draw weight for each band and every combination of bands for every draw length giving you a very easy reference of what you are pulling. The red band is a little different. Not only is it the strongest band, it is designed to replicate the peak draw of a compound bow, being much heavier in the first 10 to 20 inches. One of the things which really stands out about the bow trainer and the manual is that it does provide a program which you can train to and this is very useful if you're starting out and you need to build up strength and you have no real idea of how to do so and i think that following this program will give you the right foundations for going up in weight the training program revolves around working on your maximum draw strength or mds and that's determined by which of these bands you can draw easily to your draw length uh, I can probably do, it, say, two and three. That's on my draw length, 47 pounds. Can I draw it back easily? Yeah, that's, that's pretty easy. That, that doesn't require much effort. A little shaky, I'll try again. But if I just hold it straight, yeah, that, that's probably a comfortable draw weight. Uh, can I do one, two, and three? That's around 63 pounds in my draw length. Well, I can pull it back, but there's a significant high amount of strength you can see from my form collapsing. So I'd say around 47 pounds uh, is my maximum draw strength. I could probably do up to around 50, mid 50s, but unfortunately there's no combination for my particular draw length, which measures 50-ish pounds. So there's a bit of a gap there. You could estimate if you have to, so it's not a really big disadvantage, but for the sake of this demonstration, let's assume that 47 pound is my comfortable maximum draw strength. Of course, for those who have that draw weight ego, remember it's not a competition. It doesn't matter how much you can draw initially. It's all about training up to a higher weight. So if you're starting lower, that's okay. You start with that and over the next few weeks, by following the program, you should see some gains. The program is broken down into three components, the warm-up, resistance training, and strength training. The goal being to work up to the point where you can improve on your overall strength. And I do like this breakdown, it does make sense, and for people who need some structure in their training, this is a good template. The first phase is the warm-up, and in the warm-up, you do two sets of 8 to 10 reps using around 30 to 40 percent of your maximum draw strength. So assuming my maximum draw strength is 45 to 47 pounds, uh, I would use around 16 to 18 pounds. And for this draw length I'm using, that will be the first band only. And obviously if your maximum draw strength is different, then you would have a different set of uh, bands. But the warm up is basically this, you come to your full draw, and then you let down. It's meant to be a very gentle entryway into the program. Just do ten, 8 to 10 reps. Don't force yourself to do too many if it's too hard, um, especially if you're starting out and you haven't yet determined a good comfortable draw weight. Then just do what you can. Don't overstress yourself for this part here. And I've lost count already. I think that's 9. And then we do one more. And that's it. And then we rest for 1 minute.
We do our second set. Again, same band, just 18 pounds for me. That's about 40% of my maximum draw strength. And just as you're doing, just bear in mind that um, you can use any anchor you want. You can do your core the mouth anchor. You could do your under the chin anchor. That's what you prefer. So whichever anchor is more comfortable for you, you do. You're still using the right muscles. And while we're talking about that, do keep form in mind. Uh, keep your shoulders down. Uh, a lot of new archers will find that the front shoulder creeps up like this. So try to keep your shoulder down. It's safer. You won't strain your muscles or injure yourself in archery. And these are good form habits to work into. So do your, your warm-up reps. And then after your last one, you just rest. So the next phase is resistance training. And for this phase, you do three sets of 8 to 12 reps using around 50 to 70% of your maximum draw weight. So for me, uh, 50 to 70%, it's around 22 to 32 pounds. Uh, and the closest one is my third band, which is 26 pounds. Not quite 70%, but within the range, so I can use this for my uh, second phase. So you do 8 to 12 reps. Yeah, if you don't feel you can do all 12, just do 8 and you'll be alright. So we do 12. It's 1. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then we rest for one to two minutes. And what I'm liking so far, of course, by having this structured program, you're not starting too heavy too soon. So one of the big traps in training is you go with the heaviest possible draw weight and then you overstrain yourself trying to work up to it. So I like the system so far. Um, the fact that you can start with the lower draw weights, you have your warm up, you have resistance training, so it does feel like you're doing something. You're not, again, pushing your limits yet, but you will feel that strain, that ache come in. So it's the right kind of pain. Second set. And third set. And just remember too of archery, it's all about using your back muscles. Use your big muscles, not your small ones. It shouldn't be about using your arms. Your arms are supported by your back muscles. So when you try and pull it back, you load the weight onto your back muscles. That's correct archery form. That's a, the way you should be using this tool and the way you should be shooting as well. If you're using your arms, if you're going like that, like that, that's not the proper training method. It should really be the same way you shoot. And that's why you see arts do this. It's slow. It's not, you're not trying to do this to get through as quickly as possible. You want to feel the right way. And this is very important because when you do arch with a real bow, you can tell when you're doing it wrong. The last phase is the strength training, and this uses 70 to 90% of your maximum draw strength. Now, this one's a little different because you use the red band. Are these the red band by itself or the red band combined with a different band, depending on your maximum draw strength? So for me, let's say maximum draw strength is 45 pounds. That would be around 42 pounds, and this... Uh, red band is actually 40 pound on my fingers. If I have a high maximum draw strength, then I would use a red and number one, for example. And I wouldn't use this red by itself. Now, the goal of this one is four sets of eight to ten reps. And this is different because you don't pull all the way back to your anchor. You need to pull around 10 to 20 inches, which in comparison is around midpoint between your elbow and your shoulder. So you still want to follow the correct line and use your back muscles but you don't have to draw it back to your anchor. You can, and that's something that's physically possible, but the point of this exercise is not to pull all the way back, but to keep on working on this strength training. So do around eight to 10 reps, 
And this is again the heaviest weight you pull and the, the red band is a bit stiffer than the other ones initially so that's why this training phase is we're going to focus on just doing that and then you take a break for one to two minutes per set second set and you should really start to feel that that strain coming in again just be careful of your form you want to keep your elbow down or your shoulders down keep your elbow rotated out correctly otherwise you start getting your shoulder being lifted upwards set three and the the program recommends doing this once per day five to seven times per week and really from start to finish it should take around 15 20 minutes at most it's the easier thing to squeeze in you know in the evening after work doing your breaks and it's a fairly good program like what i'm feeling so far is that the uh it does help in my opinion um I, i've been shooting my 45 pound samix age which is around like 35 pounds on my fingertips and if you've watched my January practice videos where I use the same mix age, um, I have been improving on the collapse a bit more. And this is part of the reason why I'm not using a heavier weight on this bow trainer. And it's kind of really helping me control the weight of my bow when I'm actually using it. And final set. Now, one word of warning using this, uh, do be mindful of the way your fingers uh, rub against the latex. Um, in my first few days of using it, I noticed that my uh, ring finger, this one here, I've actually um, grey some skin by uh, the way I've been holding it, it kind of turns in your finger. I've noticed that in the, f in the first week my skin actually came off, so uh, do be mindful. Um, it's not a dangerous tool to use, of course, but uh, if you are not paying attention to where you're gripping the latex, then you might find that you might have some discomfort for a few days. And of course, you know, if you can't do the full full sets of like you know, 10 reps, don't worry about too much. Do as much as you can um, and try to do it right for maximum gain. That's the idea. A lot of people um, will find that, say, 45 pound is insane. They can't do it. That's fine. Um, you know, we're in a generation where you have the big draw weight egotists, but a lot of people starting out really do have noodle arms and they can't pull back 20 pounds at full draw. So that's why I do like this tool. It does give you a lot of entry point. That's the big advantage of the bow trainer. So if you compare the bow trainer to something like the Saunders Power Pull, the Power Pull is good too, it's very small and compact. And it has the same idea with multiple bands, so you could quite easily you know, do you know, warm-ups or resistance with one band, and then move on to the second one for heavier weights, and that works fine. Um, but there's only two, so if you want to have an easier scaling towards higher weights then the bow trainer with its four bands could be a lot more useful. Uh, disadvantage is that it's a bit bigger, a lot bigger. It's not huge but you have to like you know put it in a real awkward place. It's not that large. You can just lie it against your wall, put it under your table, so it's not that bad. But if you're looking for something to put in your drawer, in your bag, then this might not be the best thing. I find this is good for home training. Uh, a lot of archers, especially the more professionally trained ones, will use the uh, SPT system used by Kesik Lee or this uh, spe specific purpose training. Um, that requires the entire bow to be set up. So if you're not shooting and you don't have your bow set up, you just want to do some practice at home, I think the bow trainer is one of the better kits out there. Just because you don't have to fidget around with too many settings, you don't have to pull it together, it already comes as is. So you just pull it back as you need to. That's probably the best thing. The other really good thing about the bow trainer is the training program. Um, when you buy the bow trainer and you read the manual, it does teach you how to use it to its best effect. And a lot of these stretching bands, they come as is, so you don't really have a goal. Just, you just practice pulling it back and doing it for longer or doing it for more reps. So you have to adapt your training routine to the stretching band. So whereas the bow trainer 
does have one as a template to start with and it does ensure some progress in the weeks to come. And does it make a difference? Of course it does. Any, any kind of training uh, will help you become stronger and having more strength and endurance makes you a better archer. It gives you more control and more confidence. And I've been doing this for around two weeks, which isn't that long. And the program recommends you check your maximum jaw strength every three weeks. But that's a pretty good time period. And again, most weight training programs will see gains in this time period. The main thing is frequent practice. And again, this thing recommends uh, one session per day, five to seven days per week. And personally, even after a week and a half of using it, I have noticed a difference. Compared to like not shooting at all and not training at all for a couple of weeks, this is a good thing to use. It's easy to pick up and pull back. You can go through the whole um, routine in around 15 to 20 minutes, which makes this a very convenient tool. So I do recommend the bow trainer. I have enjoyed using it and it does make you sweat a bit. So it's something which is very flexible very adaptable and definitely a valuable tool so it's worth the money and worth checking out anyway this is new sensei hope you found this helpful thanks for watching and i'll see you next time